You are welcome to this preview of Reversing Hermon, Session 7, The Watcher's Sin and Human Depravity. Learning Objectives By the end of this session, we shall be able to explain several causes of human depravity, why God gave written laws, and how Jesus counteracts our depravity. Two sources of inhuman depravity include both human and demonical. One human source is expressed in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Interestingly, nowhere in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, is human depravity associated with Adam's transgression. I am a creature of clay, fashioned with water, a foundation of shame, and a source of impurity, an oven of iniquity, and a building of sin, a spirit of error and depravity without knowledge, terrified by your just judgments. This was a common attitude in the centuries just before Jesus was born. Another human source is expressed in the New Testament. Each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire when it has conceived gives birth to sin, and sin when it is fully grown brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. A demonical source of human depravity is first expressed in Genesis chapter 3. The serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that when you both eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. To Adam, Yahweh said, You shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. The result of Adam's sin was death for all human beings, not necessarily depravity. Genesis chapter 6 is more to the point. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The transgression of the sons of God, their mating with women, and birthing of Nephilim is associated with the great wickedness of human beings. The book of First Enoch explains the same event in this way. The giants who were begotten by the spirits and flesh, they will call them evil spirits upon the earth. From the holy watchers was the origin of their creation, and the spirits of the giants lead astray, do violence, make desolate, and attack and wrestle and hurl upon the earth and cause illnesses. Humans are now under the influence of demon spirits, the souls of the Nephilim who drowned in the flood. This is also expressed in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Declare the splendor of God's radiance in order to frighten and terrify all the spirits of the ravaging angels and the bastard spirits, demons, Lilith, owls and jackals, and those who strike unexpectedly to lead astray the spirit of knowledge. And in the New Testament, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So, why then did God give written laws? According to Galatians chapter 3, The law, which came 430 years afterwards, 
does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God, why then the law? It was added because of transgressions, until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made. God had promised his blessing or salvation to Abraham's descendants as well as to all other nations, for salvation is by faith alone, not by works of the law. So why then the law? Well, because of transgressions. But whose transgressions? Sin is not counted where there is no law, yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam. We understand that where there is no law, God does not count transgression as sin. However, the New Testament reports that there was a great transgression that occurred in Genesis chapter 6. Thus Jude, alluding to that event, reports, The angels, who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling. How does this come together then in cosmic history? Well, let's look at three entities, God, angels or watchers, and human beings. In the beginning, God creates the sons of God, those spirit beings who watched him. He also created Adam and Eve. God warned Adam about disobeying his one command. However, one of the watchers, whom we call the serpent, did transgress by committing sedition against Yahweh and by suborning the human beings. Before the flood, watcher spirits transgressed by leaving their place of authority, coming down to earth, mating with women. These watchers then taught the human beings how to make war and other illicit arts. As a result, God damned those watchers, sending them to hell, and he drowned their giant offspring in the flood. After the flood, God appointed other watchers to serve as gods over the Gentile nations. He then made promises to Abraham and his descendants, which would also apply to other nations. At the giving of the law and other events, God made covenants with the people of Israel mediating these through angels. Likewise, after the flood, evil watchers were empowering certain giant clans in the land who opposed Israel, blaspheming their god Yahweh. When God gave the law, the purpose was to suppress sin, not to give salvation. He also inspired many holy prophets to remind the people of God's promise, calling them to remain loyal to Yahweh. Eventually, Yahweh kept his promise and sent Messiah Jesus, announcing his birth both beforehand and afterwards through angels. Jesus began his public ministry by resisting Satan's temptations becoming a kind of second Adam. During his ministry, he often casted out demons, that is, the spirits of the Nephilim, setting humans free. By his transfiguration and his death on the cross, Jesus Christ defeated the watchers whilst redeeming sinners from death. God also gives angel helpers to those who obey Jesus Christ, who is building his church in all the nations. In the heavens, Jesus is subjecting his enemies, especially the watcher spirits, whilst preparing a kingdom for us human beings. Here is an overview of the watcher's career on earth. At the creation, they were singing whilst God was preparing a place for the humans in Eden, where the watchers served as gardeners. One of them, the serpent, however, committed sedition 
and tempted the human beings. After the humans fell, watchers were made guards to keep them away from the tree of life. During the time of Jared, these watchers committed their great transgressions, leading to the flood when God damned those watchers to hell and putting other watchers over the Gentiles to rule them. God occasionally meets with his angelic beings in a divine council where he chides them for allowing social injustice amongst humans. At Jesus' birth, the watchers moved King Herod to commit infanticide. And at Jesus' crucifixion, they committed regicide. That is, they put the King Jesus to death. During this current church age, the Watcher's main work is the creation and propagation of false religion. At Christ's return, even the Watchers in hell will be released from the pit to assemble human armies and invade Israel. During the Kingdom Age, they will be suppressed, but will be preparing a final revolt at the end of a thousand years. But in the new heaven and the new earth, the Watchers and all their Nephilim spirits, as well as humans who blaspheme Yahweh, will be sent forever into a lake of fire. Well, all this underscores that we humans need a powerful mediator. Enoch failed at an attempt to mediate between Yahweh and the Watchers. Enoch, go and say to the Watchers of Heaven, who sent you to petition in their behalf, you should petition in behalf of humans. A stolen mystery you learned. Through this mystery the women and men are multiplying evils on the earth. Say to them, you will have no peace. The Watchers had asked Enoch to petition God on their behalf. However, God rejected their petition, telling them, you will have no peace. However, there is one successful mediator between God and human beings. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. There is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. This underscores the vast superiority of Jesus Christ over all other spirit and human beings. By him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. All watcher spirits must obey Jesus Christ. Thus Jesus receives many unique titles in the New Testament, including these. He is the Word, which was with God and who was God. He is God's only Son, the Messiah. He is the Savior of the world. There is no other Savior. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to God the Father but through Him. And His is the only name given amongst human beings by which they may be saved forever. And, as we have read, he is the one mediator between God and humans. And it is he who gave himself once for all a sacrifice for sins, that we may come to God and eternal life. Your assignment for next time is to read in the book Reversing Hermon, Chapter 8, The Watchers and Head Covering. And visit our website for other materials reversinghermon.site